Okay, so I'm gonna jump back to the browser. And now the next step we did after going south was going back north again. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in north. And it says, you're in a house, there's a door to the east and a window to the south. So we're back where we began. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the code after we did that. It will be very similar to what just happened, but working through the process will help us envision what the code is actually doing. So I'm gonna go back to the code and scroll up to the top. Now again, the only difference is we typed north rather than south, and we were in a different location. We were in the garden location instead of the house. So we start our adventure session, which again just runs session start for now. We initialize a couple of variables, and then let's go ahead and skip down to the processing, pass the functions, pass the data, and it's gonna check to see if the command exists. It does, so we're gonna go ahead and run it. So let's go ahead and jump to run command. I'm gonna scroll up. Here's the function here. We're gonna globalize some data, set some global commands, and check to see if our command is in the global commands. It's not, so we're gonna skip all of this. We're gonna convert the command to all lowercase, and then we're going to grab the commands from this location. And this time, instead of the location being the house, right here for the session location variable, it will be garden. So the commands will be a bit different. We're gonna to check to see if our command exists as a key for the list of commands. So let's go ahead and scope out the list of commands. I'm gonna scroll down here to the garden, and we see the commands here under the garden variable in the garden item, and we can move north, east, and smell. So north is what we typed, and so we're going to run move to house. So I'm gonna scroll back up here, and sure enough, this key will exist, and we're going to go ahead and evaluate it. So what we're evaluating is a function move to, just like we did previously. So if we go ahead and scroll down to the move to function here, the two things that we're doing one more time are resetting the location session variable to the new place, which in this case is house, and we're adding an item to the log array with the description for the house. That's the end of our run command function. So we're gonna jump back to the processing code down here. Here we were. We're gonna skip this code because we have an item in the log array. Then we're gonna render the log array as the log output. And then we're going to render the default inventory because we still haven't done anything to add anything to it. And finally, we're going to output our form one more time. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at the next command that we ran. So I'm gonna jump back to the browser, and what we did at this point when we ran through the demo was we typed look. So I'm gonna go ahead and type look and hit enter, and it says, hey, there's a fishing pole on the ground. So let's go ahead and go through the code one more time after this happens. Now, just in case you're feeling like this is a little bit tedious, I completely understand. The variations between these different commands is relatively small, but every time you work through the code, you get a sense of how the overall code works. And that's the way that you can figure out how to optimize it better, how to add more flexibility, ways that you find that the code is maybe a little bit clunky and you can improve it. And if you're new to logic and code, then every time you go through this, you're improving your ability to understand deep logic. So as we work through the process of this code, you see functions within functions within the code base. And the more you can stretch your mind around those nested function calls, the easier it will be to envision those as you write code from scratch. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump back to the code and scroll back up to the top. Now again, we typed look while we were in the house. So we're going to go ahead and start our session here, which will run this function, which will start our session, and we'll skip this code because we have a session location set. We initialize our data, and then we skip all of these function calls and all of this data declaration until we get to the processing. We're gonna to check to see if the command post variable is set. It is, so we're going to run the run command function again. This time the command is look. So let's go ahead and scroll back up to run command. Here we are in run command. We passed look as the command variable here. We globalize some additional variables to access. We set some global commands. We check to see if our command is in the global commands, which it's not at this point, so we skip all of this. We convert our command to all lowercase, in case it's not already. And then we grab the commands for the location where we currently are, which again is the house. We're gonna check to see if the key exists inside of this commands array. And so the key is going to be look, and we'll actually find it. And so let's go ahead and see what that code is. So I'm gonna scroll down to the house data here. And under commands, we have look here. And what we're doing here is adding an item to the log array. But like we went through before, what we add depends on whether we've actually grabbed the fishing pole into our inventory or not. 
If it is in our inventory, which we're checking with this in array function here, then we're going to display the standard text for nothing, which is lined up with what's right here. It says, there's nothing of importance here, move along. But this first time that we look, the fishing pole isn't in our inventory, so we're going to display some other text, which is, hey, there's a fishing pole on the ground. Okay, let's go ahead and jump back up to the run command function. And so we're gonna take that command right here and we're going to evaluate it as if it was PHP, which will simply add an item to the log array. And then we're going to skip this code because we ran a valid command. And then let's go ahead and jump back down to our processing code. Okay, so we got done with this run command here. The next step is checking our log array. We have an item in it, so this code is going to be skipped. Then we're going to render our log array, which includes the one item for seeing the fishing pole on the ground. And then we're going to render our inventory list, which is still empty, even though we're about to pick up that fishing pole. And so we're going to display the default text here. And then finally, we're going to render our interface, print out the log, which simply displays the information about the fishing pole and our empty inventory.